All right, Blizzard, let's talk heroes. Mephisto, Lord of Hatred. We used to grind him for magic find items back in D2. Let's grind him out for some easy kills in Heroes of the Storm, right? Let's do that. So this one comes to us from Lee Driv, Lee Driv, the, the guy with the Manx profile picture there. Why do you guys never have normal usernames? I, I swear you're doing that just to screw me up. Uh, this guy actually did a ton of Heroes concepts on the Heroes Fire website that I've been getting a lot of this stuff from. So while I was browsing for different ideas to like email people about and being like, you've got a cool idea, can I cover it? His name just kept pop popping up and popping up and popping up to the point where I just sent him a mass email being like, you have lots of cool stuff, can I review it? And he, re he wrote me back, he's like, dude, I'd be honored. So, you know, yeah, we're doing it, man. So, the main reason I'm starting with his Mephisto idea, because he had a lot of cool ones for Diablo characters, and that, that hits me right in the nostalgia, is because he made him a support. Never would I have guessed Mephisto to be a support. Because if you remember Mephisto, at least from, like, Diablo 2, he had, he was, he had, like, nothing that was a like, healing. He had that mega, like, death ball thing that he'd throw across the screen that would kill you if you were a weak level or you had shitty resistances. Uh, he had, like, all the minions around him. He had he had lots of stuff, but none of it screamed healing to me. None of it screamed freaking support. I, I, I guess he does have CC and crowd control, which a support can have, but it just didn't make any sense to me. Not to mention, most of my memories of Mephisto were of just standing opposite his blood pool thing in Diablo 2 and casting Meteor with the, <laughs> the Sorceress, and the last second switching to my magic find gear and killing him. So, there was that too. I swear, if you included anything about Magic Find and like his passive or something like that, you get like bonus points right there. So one one cool thing that uh, Lee Deriv, I, I gotta double check. Am I saying it right? I'm gonna call you Lee Deriv, and if I get it wrong, I apologize. One good thing that Lee Deriv put into this is like an overview for the skill. So if you're just browsing like concept after concept on this website and you you just want to like get like a gist of what's going on with the character, this is really cool to have. Now, I'm not actually going to spend time reading over all of this stuff here, simply because we're already going to be analyzing every single ability singly as it is. Singly? Singularly? Each? And uh, th so the, it kind of makes this redundant. So we're going to move on past that. But it is a really cool idea, so, you know, points for effort. So his combat trait is Malice. It has a uh, cooldown and a mana cost, so it's not a passive. It is an actual ability. So you mark an enemy with a demonic rune, causing allies who deal damage to that enemy to be healed for 50... So, minor healing every time they deal damage. You can maintain malice on one enemy at a time until you run out of mana or switch to a different target. An ally can be healed by malice only once every blah 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 seconds. You can cancel the effects by self-casting malice. Okay, so that's, a, that's actually a really cool idea, is like marking them. It's kind of like like doing the Tyrande passive. I find like I mentioned Tyrande a lot in these videos. She's just got like one of those passives that's really easy to, to synergize with other people. But you basically mark it like her, but rather than taking additional damage, they heal when they attack it. So it's get, it's basically giving lifesteal in a whole new direction. And I'm sure other MOBAs and other games have done a mechanic like this before too, where you just hit something. I think it's like a um I think it's like a retelling of the life tap ability that necromancers usually get. Kind of. I, I can't quite remember how life tap works. I don't have my D2 book handy right now, but yeah, either way, it sounds a little bit like that to me. So that's really cool. Now the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is. I don't see, uh, just as a quick glance, I don't see healing in your three primary abilities here. I see I see what looks like attacks and maybe a summon. So, if this is your only way to heal in heroes, I would maybe consider changing it from a flat minor amount of healing. Because, like, yeah, 50 plus 4% as levels go on. Like, I get that. That's supposed to grow with you. I don't know the math in my head to see if that's going to be enough as your only healing ability. Because I know this is supposed to be built up like a Lucio kind of heal where you can't actively influence short of ramping it up. But you it, you might not have a way to do that. Maybe your talents can do that. Maybe. But if not, I, I might fuck with that number a little bit just to make it a little bit better. Maybe a little bit worse if it is too broken. I don't know. But as it stands on its own without me knowing the math, I think this ability is really cool and I would like to play it. Your primary abilities. Uh, your Q is Charge Bolt. Send out a rapid lightning bolt which deals minor damage to the first target it hits. If the target is afflicted by any debuffs, um, I, I, you know, I have a question. Right uh, right away, does Malice count as a debuff? Because if it does, like, that's really cool, and you've already given me an idea. Like, all of your abilities should somehow now, <laughs> like, they should all somehow um, coincide with debuffs. Somehow. Like, if they're debuffed, they get extra. But that's that's just where this went to it. But if Malice counts as a debuff, awesome. Uh, Half-length version of the debuff is spread to all nearby allies. Oh, that's cool. So wait, 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 that would be really, that would be cool actually, but I don't, that makes me question if Malice counts as a debuff then, because if you hit 
say, a Diablo with Malice, and people start pinging at him, and you hit him with Charged Bolt, and it spreads to his buddies, does that mean you heal off of hitting all of them? And if that's the case, how, how does the half-length version of that work? So that makes me think it's not a debuff, it doesn't count, which is a shame to me, because I think that would be really cool, but I also don't know how that would work. But it is really neat that it spreads out the, the debuffs. Like, if you hit someone with, like, you, you root someone with Malfurion and you charge bolt that guy. And it spreads to somebody else. Now they're rooted! That's really cool! Oh, I like that. A charge bolt spreads all debuffs except for stun, root, malice, and science. I should have kept reading. Why do I never finish reading these before? Wait, what? Stun, root, malice, and silence. So malice does count. What the hell else is there? What other debuffs are there? Slow is the only one that comes to mind. Yeah. I guess poison, like that, like um, a Gul'dan or a Nazebu or a Lunara attack, maybe? But beyond that, is there anything else that does... Is there any other debuffs in the game? Beyond Fire from the Dragon, maybe. I don't know if that counts. Uh, it, I like Charge Bolt. I really do. I think you've kind of kneecapped it by taking away so many debuffs. Because that was, like, the best part of it. Okay, you know what? Uh, I, I'll, I'll cut you a break here. If Charge Bolt has a talent that adds those extra debuffs back in, like, you can buff Charge Bolt to include Stun, Root, and Silence. Obviously, you, Malice would be too broken, as you've you've already uh, covered for that but if there's a talent to add that back in don't change a thing i love it if there's not maybe consider taking either the stun the root or the silence out and making it part of the ability like it can hit one of those probably the probably the silence because it seems to be the hardest one to inflict because lots of characters have roots like thrall and malfurion lots of characters have stuns like muradin he's got stuns he's got slows he's got stuns he's got everything but um, the silence is a little bit harder, like Valyria and Alarak, but that's about it. I think Varian might have one. And then there's alts that cause it. That's about it. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I would, I would consider either giving a talent that puts them back in, so you have to take, you have to waste a talent point just to get it, or put one of them in by default and not buff it with a talent. But either that, I like Charge Bolt. I like it. Uh, Ice Ball. Send forth a large ball of icy magic which hits all enemies in a path for once so minor damage. All enemies are reflected by slow for 35% and last few seconds. So you've already got a combo built up here. You throw out your W and then you hit him with Q after that. Preferably if someone's been rooted or slowed in the meantime. So you've already got you've got like an easy target to hit. But I like that. And especially if you've got Malice going, you're healing the whole time you're doing it. So that's good. I like Ice Ball. The only, the only complaint I have on this one is the icon's wrong. That is definitely not an Ice Ball. And I'm pretty sure... Well, I guess the Frozen Orb uh, picture from Diablo 2 doesn't work because it's not in color. And you have to use what you've got from uh, D3. But still, like... To, I, I like Ice Ball, it's good. I got no complaints so far. Uh, number three is Coral, Call Morlu. Summon a Morlu near you. Um, if you don't know what a Morlu is, they're essentially like a demonic warrior. Think kind of like Asmodan's abilities for that. But they're basically, I believe they were like really tainted or corrupt humans that fought, uh, that, that basically fought to the death and were brought back through demonic magic to continue fighting. And every time they're killed and brought back, they get stronger. Um, the, uh, the Diablo novels, uh, the Sin War trilogy, is the first time I ever saw them really heavily written about. But I know there are in a lot of the, they are in Diablo two and they are in Diablo three as well. But um, that's where I started to get like a lot of details about them was from that book there because it actually explains in pretty decent detail uh, how Morlu are functioning and like what they are. Because I would have just thought immediately Demon Warrior and that was it, like end all be all there. But no, there's some good de description given here. So that's what a Morlu is. Uh, he got some decent health, attacks per once per second for blah 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 damage. Morlu prefers to attack the target of Malice and heals nearby allies. Oh, okay. So I was trying to figure out, I'm like, what good does that do him? You're not a specialist, so you don't need summons. The fact that that procs Malice to continue healing allies, that's good. Because if your allies are already running away and they can't stop to attack, but like there's a dot on them that's killing them, the, the, the Malice being healed from the Morlu attacking might be enough to save them. Because I've been killed by a dot while safely behind a wall. Oh my god, hundreds of times. Hundreds of freaking times, but no ally was around to throw a healing at me or a shield. That could save my life. So I like that. I, I actually was going to question why that was even on this kit. Right up until I read that last the last two lines there. So, props. I, his whole basic kit so far, I like. Uh, his heroic abilities. His first one is Poison Cloud. Passive. The heal from Malice is increased by 10%. Right away, that already makes this a pretty promising passive. Because, because as I said, you only have the one healing ability and it's your passive. And it's ability itself. Create a choking cloud of poison that stacks the damage over time effect on all enemies within it once per second. I hope that's another, like I said, poison is another status ailment. I kind of hope that's something that Charge Bolt can leech onto and benefit from. 
sec uh, it goes per for seven seconds second for seven times poison claw lasts for eight seconds now as someone who started diablo 3 as playing as a witch doctor and abused the shit out of all the poison variations of it i like this ability just just for myself but either way i i think this is a really cool heroic it does chain well because it's got, it gives a passive boost and you can stack it I, i'm assuming you can stack it with charged bolt to spread it even further if someone doesn't get caught in the cloud you could hit them with the charged bolt so there you go Plus, they're going to be pinging for damage all the time, so the Malice is going to be going off healing even more. So, yeah, I like that. Second one is called Kiss of Mephisto. After a 0.4 second delay, that's a weird number. Target hero is healed by a ton, and the target of Malice is a 24. Oh, that's really good, too. So, basically, you hit somebody with Malice. Uh, let's just say a tank. Let's just say you hit Diablo with Malice, and you've got a Valor nearby. And the Mal Val is about to get, like, rocked by this Diablo. So you heal her, you drop the Diablo's armor, and you just go to town and heal for even more off of that. I like that. I like that. That's good, too. Man, that's a tough one. Normally when I do these um, these critiques, I can look at a heroic and be like, I, I use that one over that one immediately. These are both good. I'm actually torn. I guess this is, this is going to be a really good example of let the situation determine what you pick. Because both of these are really good. So, I don't think I changed anything about either of those. Like, the numbers obviously might have to be to, to be messed with a little bit to balance them more, but because I can't really do the math on my own, it, it's there. Like, I'm not smart enough to do the math on the fly like that, so it's there. But beyond that, I like them. Into the talents, um, I do like how he saves some time by just writing Conjurer's Pursuit passive. Conjurer's Pursuit's already in the game. I think Lee Ming has it. Uh, I think Jaina might have it. Maybe KT. I'm not really 100% on that. But either way, it's the same as that. Because he didn't write anything down, so I'm assuming it's the same. Hatred knows no bounds. Passive, your basic attacks and trait now have 25% longer range. The the trait seems pointless when as soon as you get it on, you can keep it on indefinitely. You don't have to maintain a leash with them. But it will let you hit it from farther away. So if you want to hit like that leaming in the back, you can be like, there you go. Uh, the, basic, the basic ability thing is kind of handy though. So, you know, it could be good for that. So the last level one talent is Wrathful Fervor. Allies who attack the target of Malice gain 10% movement speed for two seconds, stacking with other movement speed buffs they may have. Now see, I... I'm sure it's not because I keep bringing it up, but people are finally starting to realize they should start listing like things that stack in these, and that's super handy. That makes it really easy to see synergies that you could have with the characters if they were ever created. That's really cool. Now, the movement speed bonus is actually, it's a small one, but it's also, I can see that being pretty useful because you're already gonna be attacking this thing anyway, and you might need to leg it at some point. So the moment you like things go wrong, at least you've got that that speed buff for two seconds and you could leg it out of there. And it doesn't say it, um, it doesn't say it degrades over time, so you still get it for a solid two seconds. That's a lot in this game. So, oh, pretty much all three of these level one talents are actually pretty decent. Level four, lightning strikes twice. Charge bolt now moves 25% faster, 30% wider, and pierces to the first target hit. If you've got a team that has a lot of debuffs that are covered by charge bolt, I would absolutely recommend taking that. Because you throw that into a heavy crowd and suddenly everybody's poisoned. Everybody's slowed. Everybody has more dots, more dots, more dots. It's good. Take it. It's good. Avalanche. Ice Ball now slows enemies further depending on the distance it travels before hitting them. So you have to 80% decaying over the duration. That one's not bad because like, I usually have a problem with a slow that's that powerful without it being like an ultimate of some kind. But because you kind of have to work for that, you basically have to like leaming orb that from across the battlefield to really pull that off to get the slow of that much. And even then, it does say it decays over the duration. So that's actually pretty good. I, I, I like that one too. Damn, you're really good at this. Uh, evil Eye trait. The target of Malice now has 12% less ability towers long. That, ooh, that's also really good. Shit, that's really good, because you're going to be using your trait all the time. So on top of them taking additional damage, or them, you getting healed off of attacking. I don't know why I said it takes additional damage. On top of you uh, healing off of it whenever you attack them, you're also making them weaker just by, just by having it on them. Now, yeah, it's draining your mana constantly, so I, I feel like Mephisto is going to be a really heavy mana-intensive character. Like, you're going to be, need to be backing for mana a lot, but that's probably why Conjurer's Pursuit is one of his level 1 talents. But, like, stuff like this, goddamn, it just makes your passive have so much more value than it already has, and it already has a ton of value! Like, damn! So that's good, I like that. Uh, number 7 is Limitless Hordes. You may now have an additional charge of Column Orlu and their health is increased, uh, health and healing is increased by 15%. Also really, really good. Although I will make the argument that the name might be a little uh, misleading, because Limitless doesn't mean two. Limitless means unlimited, like lots. Like you can have limitless of them. So maybe rethink that name, but it is really good. I like that ability. Rune Charged Bolt. 
Charge Bolt now spreads a lesser form of Malice up to three targets if the primary target is already afflicted by Malice. This form lasts for two seconds, costs no mana to upkeep, and all allies can be healed from multiple enemies at once with a separate timer for each. Allies who get enemies affected by Recharge Bolt's version of Malice are healed for that much damage with a 0.5 second mana. So, okay, so what I was complaining earlier about how Charge Bolt doesn't carry Malice alongside it because I couldn't figure out if they could do that or not, this is what you had in mind for that. So you did actually have a talent plan for Charge Bolt covering Malice. It's just rather than covering the main one, which would drain your mana like crazy, this gives it its own version of it. So I like that, I really do. Like, you've got a really, really good kit here. I like this. Now, my Aspen Bolt, this hit with Charge Bolt increase the duration and debuff spread by Charge Bolt by 4% up to 100%. Upon reaching 100% extra debuff uptime, Charge Bolt gains 65 bonus damage. I like questing talents, they're really cool, so I got no problem with that. Heart of Cold, hit here. Wasn't Heart of Cold a quest in Diablo 2? Is that the Anya quest, or am I thinking of something else? I thought it was called Heart of Cold. Maybe it's called Heart of Ice. Maybe I'm just wrong on both accounts. Hit heroes with Ice Ball to improve its damage by 3 up to 90. I'm hitting 30 heroes, so I guess that must be what it is. Actually, that's basic math. I can totally figure that's what that is. The first enemy hit by Ice Ball is stunned for 0.6 seconds. Ooh, that's good too. Because it's not even like a broken stun, but that would be worth it. Now, the only downside is that's like a level 7 talent, and these questing talents are coming in late with like a lot of requirements. Like hitting 30 people after level 7... You've missed like a lot of chances to score those easy hits, so that's the only complaint I have with that one. But you can't put that too early either because you've already got some really, really good ones either. So you don't want to like lose out on not being able to take lightning strikes twice or evil eye or avalanche because you want heart of cold. So that's the tough one. You've made so many good talents here that you're actually going to have a lot of competition for what's good. Level 10 is etc. etc. Level 13 is malicious intent. Your trait you can now maintain malice on two targets for a cost of 12 mana per second. Casting Mouse when you already have two instances of it uh, overwrites the oldest one. So basically, if you wanted to cancel both to start maintaining your mana, you have to you have to self-cast it twice? Okay. Uh, I do like that as well because, again, it allows you to get more healing over the course of the battlefield. The problem is that is going to drain the shit of your mana, so take that for what it is. I'd probably only take that one if I was going to take Conjurer's Pursuit in level 1 and build it up to max, but we'll see. Blood Rage. Allies who repeatedly attack the target of Mouse reduce their timer before they can heal again by 0.1 seconds every time they deal damage. This reduction is reset every time they are healed. That's really good if you've got a lot of um, if you've got a lot of auto attackers. I it says attack. It doesn't say well. It doesn't say use abilities on, but that might be for either. If that includes abilities as well, that's that becomes blood rage becomes much better. If it's just for attacking, that's more situational for like I have a Zuljin and a Vala and a and a butcher. Let's go blood rage. But if I don't have those, maybe not. But again, that all comes down to if you mean abilities too. Dark Harbinger. More lose now take 40% less damage from non-heroic sources, deal 30% more damage to non-heroic sources, and increase the health of nearby minions by 65%. They also take 10% less damage from healers. Heroes. Wow, healers. That's actually pretty good, too. Um, the only downside is I feel like that's probably the weakest one out of the three on that one. And bear in mind, it comes to the whole Blood Rage thing I just talked about. But it, it, but it, has, like, it does a lot, and it has to because otherwise it would just not be worth taking. And really, it, because it's all non-heroic sources, it just basically means your moral loose are not going to get dropped by minion waves or mercenary camps, and could actually do help, like be helpful at clearing those if need be. But it's also nice because it gives like a buff, kind of like Asmodan's uh, demonic general thing that he can cast as a passive. So that's pretty good too. Now the only thing is you don't want to go too close to that because you don't want to mimic abilities because Blizzard seems to be kind of against doing that, which is fine because it creates stagnation. I mean, look at Smash Bros. How many times do we have clone characters? It's not that fun. So. Thankfully, it just seems like you've stayed stayed pretty far away from uh, copying Asmodan's ability, so I like it. It's probably the one I would take the least amount of times, but I like it. Uh, level 16, Lightning Nova. Enemies near the target of Charge Bolt also take additional damage. This target, this damage also spreads debuffs in a similar manner to Charge Bolt itself. So basically, you send out these little rock, like I'm thinking it's like the Diablo 2 Charge Bolts. So you send these little crackling balls of energy. If one stumbles into an enemy, gets hit, it goes poof. That's cool. I like that, and that'll spread it like AIDS. So that'd be really handy. I think that's the only time out loud I've ever said AIDS would be handy. Anyway. Morlus now deals... Uh, oh, sorry. Dark Grasp. Dark Grasp. Morlus now deals 75% of their base damage in an area around their target and attack 20% faster. So what you're saying is there's actually a way to build just a straight-up Morlu build with this guy if you wanted to. I don't know why you would, because out of everything, it seems like the least effective way to go... I would honestly just buff his attacking abilities and spread the debuffs around, and then, like, add Malice into those and go from there. But still, I like this. Like, if you've got a secondary healer and you want to go just go damage Mephisto, that's totally an option. Hell, you can go Summoner Mephisto, and that's almost an option. So, again, there's, there's, I like how you've given his abilities all different builds they could have. 
That's really cool. Again, don't know if I take this one as much as Lightning Nova, but it's still good that it's an option for people who could maybe think well, outside the box more than I could. Brain Freeze. Oh, I see what you did there. Ice Spell now lowers the ability of uh, target by uh, ability of effective targets by 20% for 2.5 seconds. Now, I do wonder if that does stack with the other one that lowers ability power for the um, uh, for the trait. I'm pretty sure it does, but you didn't list it, and you listed something else stacking earlier, so I don't know for sure. But I'm going to assume this one does stack. And if it does, that's really good too, especially if you're building just a full W build. But I still think Lightning Nova wins this one out just for that spreading of debuffs. The only time I wouldn't take Lightning Nova in this category is if I didn't have any allies who could spread debuff or inflict debuffs besides myself. Then maybe Brain Freeze. And the level 20 talents, they have the ultimate talents. They have Corrosive Venom. Enemies affected by Poison Cloud deal 6% less damage and are slowed by 4% per stack of the duration of the poison. Since that stacks seven times, I believe it was. Is it seven? Yep, seven times. That is a lot. So that is really good. Don't change a thing on that. I like that. Sealed of the Kiss. Allies near the target of Kiss Mephisto are healed for 50% of what the primary target's healed for and gain 30% additional healing from Malice for 4.5 seconds. I like that as well. If you're the only healer, that might be super beneficial to take just for that reason alone. So, again, don't change it. I like it. Keep it as it is. Sin Wars. Here's our last Morlu talent. Morlu's now drop from above the targets rather than coming in from a gate near you. I don't know why, but my brain just went coming to a theater near you, like, as I said that out loud. <laughs> I don't even know why that's funny. It's not, but it just made me laugh. I must be very tired. Uh, instead of coming to a gate uh, from a gate near you, dealing more damage than your enemies and applying malice to all affected targets by 1.5 seconds, that's good. So it just drops malice on it. Uh, Molos now also deal 15% more damage and move 10% faster. The Molu lands. It also heals nearby allies for minor uh, if in it, for every enemy it hit, or enemy hero it hits. Wow, that does a lot. That does a lot. I like that. Oh, that's that's good. Like if you're buff, if you're playing the Morlu build, that's a really good addition to it. And the last one is your trait passive, uh, Wrathful Gaze. The targets of Malice now take additional damage whenever they deal. They now take damage when they deal damage. Oh my god, that's so good. Holy shit. Now that's not a lot of damage, which is good because it was like damn. But you have effectively Iron Maiden them. And coming from someone who played a lot of physical characters in D2, and that was the only thing that stopped me going through hell difficulty, was those fuckers who cast Iron Maiden and I dropped in one hit. That is mean. But I like that. But it's mean. But I like that. I don't even know if I'd offer a change on that one. Like, damn. That is an ultimate talent right there. If you guys need an example of what an ultimate talent is, you take something that is already being good, and you just blow it up to being awesome. So right there, like, hot damn. I want to play this character. Like, Blizzard, make this Mephisto. I know there's already rumors that, like, like, well, they're not rumors, but people have been talking about Mephisto for freaking ever. He's up there with, like, Malthael and Imperius and, like, Deckard Kane for some reason. But, like, he's up there as, like, the Prime Evils are, the adding Bale and Mephisto have been in the, uh, been in the, uh, the talks for so long among fans of the game. If you're gonna do that, make it this one. I really want to play Mephisto as a support after reading all this, because this is a fucking awesome build. So I really like this. So, um, fight your name again. So I, I fucking love this. So, uh, Lee Riv, like, this is awesome. I am so glad I decided to, to review your Mephisto one first, because damn, I am excited for the rest of what you've come up with. But I really like this, so... If you guys, uh, if you guys enjoyed this, or if you, if you had your own suggestions for how Mephisto should run, I'm sure that's gonna be a possibility, because again, I never saw Mephisto as a support until I read this. But if you have any comments or thoughts on this in general, leave a comment below, let, let me know, let, let him know. Uh, we want to, we want to hear your feedback on what you think of this build. Naturally, I've already left a link to this build in the description below, so you can check it out yourself there. Give it, give it some thumbs up, because it's good. I like this, I want to see this in the game. And, uh, of course, if you have any builds yourself you want me to critique, you know the rules by this point, uh, give me, just give me something on Heroes Fire, it's the easiest way to go with this, it got, it, you can put the pictures on it yourself, it gives me something to put on screen for you, and I can review it at my leisure. So until next time, like, uh, Blizzard, make this a thing! I wanna see it! I wanna play it.